Well, I'm finally here. I bought a two horsepower cyclone for the woodshop. Problem is, it got delivered to the front. Woodshop's about 200 feet that way. So I figured I'd open it up here, put it in the truck, drive down the alley, somehow get it out of the truck, and assemble it out there. All that was only one cardboard paper cut. Okay, well, I somehow managed to get uh, the cyclone from the front garage down the alley to the back garage. And, uh, and in the shop, got it unloaded, no back injuries, which is a miracle. Uh, this is a uh, two horsepower motor, totally enclosed, fan cooled, uh, drawing nine amps, uh, 3400 RPM, suction capacity, take it for what it is, it says it's 1450, who knows, right? 14 and a half inch impeller. As I said before, it's a straight, straight vein aluminum impeller. Um, maybe I'll try and see if I can get a, a view of it. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna take my word for it. Six inch uh, inlet, uh, split down to two four inch. There's actually a few little baffles in here, or little breakers in here that I may or may not remove. I guess that's up to you or me. I guess the idea is so you don't get a whole bunch of chips and, and stuff in there, but isn't that where they're supposed to go? This connects the, uh, the collection drum to the, the bottom of the cone. And I thought initially when I looked at it, it looked pretty cheap. But uh, now that I looked at it a little bit more, it, it's actually, a woven fabric that's surrounded by by some sort of plastic. It's super tough. You're not gonna you're not gonna rip that. The only issue I might have is getting it to attach um, attach around the cone. I don't like my chances, but canister filter support bag and uh, and the bag clamp. Maybe is that. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I got some foam or something. Uh, the bag for the uh, filter. Uh, inner frame, again, is these pieces that go together in a circle and then insert down inside the, uh, the collection drum to hold the bag down so it doesn't get sucked up into the uh, cyclone. Everything's pretty much pre-assembled. The, uh, the instructions are okay. Basically says start with the base, add your support arms, uh, and once your wheels are on and the support arms and everything are on, then go ahead and lift this. As a general rule, I don't like to try and maneuver and lift things that come with lifting lugs installed. Bad sign. Step one, we'll try and attach these wheels to the drum base. This included uh, in this package of random bolts. Oh man, they're all different sizes too. It's, it's awful because now I have to read which ones go where. They give you a, an enclosed wrench. These are totally useless, but bless their hearts, they, they try, right? Much more useful. Oh, you know what's going to be awesome? Oh, I have to use it. Shit. Maybe there's some thinner, more expensive wrenches that I could look into buying. Well, I take it all back. Thank God for this thing, right? Save the day. No, I actually got a lot of flack about buying this dust collector. Basically, the first question out of everybody's mouth is, what are you going to make with it? Truth is, I don't know. I might make nothing with it. Who knows? Really, my, my real passion 
is uh, collecting awesome tools and hanging out in my shop. And I come to realize there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's a whole lot, right? All right. Four wheels. Look at that. What am I going to make with it? I'm kind of debating whether I should put the wheels on now and then try to attach this to a rolling base. The other option being, how the heck would I get the wheels on once I get this thing on? Given how easy it is to just do it now, I'll, I'll just go ahead and worry about blocking it later. Step three. Please have two people lift the main housing and uh, place it on the stand. Caution! The main housing is heavy. Please have at least two people working together when lifting. It's uh, about 10 o'clock at night. My options are fairly limited. It's uh, go to bed and call it a day or attempt to lift this thing, probably drop on the floor. I think we both know that I'm going to attempt. The only question is, should I videotape it? So, right. Oh, I totally should have videotaped it. Nailed it. Didn't drop it. That's nice. Step four. Place the main housing and reducing housing and secure with the clamp. The clamp that we keep bragging about. There's a problem with it. So I don't know what it is. So, that's why. So there's a tip for you. Clamp is pre-installed. Now there's four holes here. All of those are for the mounting clamps. Figured it out. So I think what I'm going to have to do is actually uh, remove that clamp completely. There's a foam gasket underneath this, pre-installed, of course that uh, I don't want to risk damaging. At the very least, I'm going to take this thing like all the way out. I'm just going to take it off. Makes you feel. 
feel like you have a chance of actually accomplishing it. Pinch fingers in three, two, one. Nope. Okay, so that's how you do that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think I should attach that with bolts. So. Half inch? Flange bolt number 21. So. Yeah, number 21 is the same number used to describe the casters. So it's actually the, uh, the half inch flange bolts. Sherlock. The Sherlock Holmes. The hell out of that one. Included Allen wrench. Uh, if you're thinking your filters are clogged, You should be able to give that a wrap once or twice, and uh, should be in business. There's an alignment ring, or alignment pin, rather, right on the top here, so you shouldn't have a whole lot of problems uh, putting it together. I'm also going to guess that there should be some sort of a foam gasket of some sort that they're going to ask me to attach. Maybe, maybe not. Although we're kind of getting to uh, go time and, and there's no, no foam seal anywhere, really. I'm, I'm assuming maybe it goes around the edge of here. Let's, let's see. You know, it doesn't mention putting on the foam anywhere. Okay, we're back because I gave up last night because I was a little bit confused about uh, a few of the foam gaskets that were included that I hadn't used up until this point given how close I am to being complete. So I made a call this morning to Canadian Woodworker um, in Winnipeg and I, uh, I asked around because those guys have obviously put together more than one of these and um, they actually said that, uh, in their experience, uh, a lot of these foam gaskets aren't uh, aren't needed. That the tolerances are so good, but um, I'm just a sucker for for foam gaskets. So anyway, I found out what they are for. Um, these two wide ones come rolled up as as one single unit. So one of them would be for the mating surface down here on the the top of the lid, and the other one on the bottom of the cone. Um, that would then make the seal between this uh, with the supplied band clamps. So, yeah, I, I could see that maybe not being uh, entirely necessary, but I'll probably use them just, just because they're there. The other one uh, on this mating surface, um, I just put that on and then cut little X's where the, where the bolts are going to poke through and where this registration pin is going to poke through. Uh, kind of a quick tip. 
was to just hit him with a heat gun on the lowest possible setting. I don't want to keep the heat gun moving because it's hot. And then these rolled up pieces of garbage will become uh, nice and malleable and they won't fight you as much. So uh, then I moved on to uh, assembling the basket, um, which is essentially an inner framework that's going to go down inside the collection, the 30 gallon collection drum to hold the bag in place so that when you turn on the cyclone, it doesn't suck the bag right up into the cyclone. So that's a little tedious because the screws are so small. And uh, I'll just try to point this out. They alternate. There's four supplied kind of L brackets and then four straight brackets. And if you are at all OCD, just uh, note, that there is a way that these straight brackets go because some of them stick out above and some of them are flush. So, I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to disassemble this and, and make it right because I can't, can't have that. I've got a feeling this will be the part of the video where I put it on super speed because, I mean, I don't even want to be here real time. Okay, so I think I got it. No supplied screwdriver or wrench for those little guys. I'm back with a six millimeter wrench to save you a bunch of time, six mil. If you don't have a six mil, what a great opportunity to go and buy a brand new set of wrenches. I mean, it, it might seem like this build was long, but don't underestimate how lazy I am. Why do I have a wrench? If you don't have a 6 mil socket, what a great opportunity to go buy a brand new set of sockets. <clears throat> That's pretty slick. I like it. After I uh, stopped last night, I went in and I watched another video on YouTube, and I don't remember the gentleman's name, but it's a, another assembly video, and it's fantastic. Uh, but it appears that he's assembling a different, it's still a two horsepower, but I think that might be a year old or so because uh, he mentions in his video that filter hung off a connection that came off of the back and then connected from here to here with a flexible tube. And I didn't even notice it uh, until I kind of started thinking in my mind, hey, where's that piece that they had trouble with in their video? I think maybe maybe uh, CWI was watching that video and they fixed it. They fixed the problem. I'm gonna try and hang this on. So far so good. Looks like I need another 12 mil wrench. Once again, everything lines up really well. I've had absolutely zero issues with the build quality or, or anything like that so far. So, well then, I'm just gonna go ahead and install these hold down brackets. gaskets with the heat gun, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun, I'm going to put it all together and then, and then that's it and we're, we're done. Okay, that uh, went way better than expected. Um, the old tip of, uh, of, of uh, hitting the, the foam gaskets as well as the, the gray kind of flexible connection piece was fantastic. Definitely do that. It went on super easy uh, with, with a little bit of heat and 
it was summertime, it wouldn't even be an issue. I put the dust bag on the, uh, the bottom of the filter. I used all the foam gaskets. I never had any issues at all. Okay, so, ow. Well, those are, those are fantastic. With those fully raised up, you have about three quarters of an inch to pull that completely clear. And, uh, and the amount of travel they have is, is really good. I almost forgot to mention that it comes with a remote control. So instant on, instant off. Uh, it also has a timer function that'll run for two, four, six, or eight hours if you wanted to run it uh, after you were out of the shop for a HEPA clean on the air. So I guess all that's left is to plug it in and make sure it works. I already know it works. Um, I actually, before I had the filter on and the, and the Y inlet, I plugged it in last night uh, and it actually produced so much um, force on the, there was so much air moving through it that it started to spin like a cyclone back, of, like a cyclone. It started to spin back there, which, uh, which I didn't expect having made the jump from, you know, a small uh, rigid vacuum or a, or a festival vacuum up to, up to this is another, uh, yeah, is another, another league altogether. Batteries included on this, so let's do it. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. This is kind of the first video of, uh, of many that I hope to do, um, just as I kind of get my feet under me in the shop. So uh, if you're thinking about picking up a dust collector, Canadian Woodworker has been fantastic to deal with in not only this, but in a lot of my other tools uh, purchases. Um, shipping was, was really good. It was actually door-to-door -door service with lift gate service. So, Meaning he had a hydraulic lift and he just lowered it down and rolled it into my shop. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, I didn't turn that off at all.